Hello from Art Kilmartin in County Limerick. Uh, John here again. And we're inside in this wee graveyard in the lowlands of the Golden Vale of County Limerick. Lovely spot. Very interesting graveyard. First thing of note on the way in. A lot of these County Limerick graveyards have very fine um, entrance features as if there was a contract um, for providing boundary walls and uh, they use dressed limestone and there's a coffin rest here. I'm not sure how old the kissing gate is, maybe not so old, but this coffin rest here, the coffin very often in graveyards doesn't come in through the gate, it would be uh, balanced on that kind of a rest. So I'm wondering if um, that's presumably what that was too. And when you come in to Ardkilmartin, you're here then, the ruined church is here. I think that's the um, East Gable. Uh, I think that's a later addition as a, a burial ground, uh, as a, a walled off burial space. And it looks to me like if that was the ruined church, then it's been repaired considerably. Those boulders are all cemented together. So I'd say um, that's quite uh, a modern fix. And the high stone wall uh, and most of the um, monuments are here in front of us. Now Ard Kilmartin, it's an interesting name because it's not high, so Ard Asquilga is high. Uh, what you can see way off in the distance there are the Belly Howers. And the survey we did here was part of the Belly Howers development surveys that we did through, throughout lockdown. And uh, we came down into these lowlands of Limerick and there were uh, long country roads, winding country roads, very easy to get lost down here unless you're a local. Uh, we even got lost here now, driving over here today. Um, but Ardkill Martin, the Martin in this place name is for St. Martin of Tours, it would appear, and it's uh, a medieval name. So it's that European Christian linkage. There is another town then we're going to later, Martin's Town, uh, which is adjacent to the graveyard of Malou, St. Malou. And I think that's more likely to be a surname rather than a saint's name over there. Um, so there was a ruined medieval church here. The dominant, uh, one of the dominant families in the area appears to have been the Roaches uh, potentially back then, but certainly in the 19th and 20th century. Uh, that high um, screen or mural um, memorial, that's for a branch of the Roach family. And the other side of that gable there is for another branch of the Roach family. And if you saw our video on Old Court in Danarail, I was talking about the shift in, um, in the power structures in Munster after the Munster Plantation. And the Roaches would have been big power uh, before that period, before the Munster Plantation, the 1580s onwards. And afterwards, you see, the thing is, in Ireland, you can't completely destroy the people who came before you. You try to hang on to the lower class workers and get rid of the higher class if you can and you can't do that because they have legal rights and so on so they'll hang on and in this case here this is one of the oldest headstones in the graveyard this is a roach headstone thomas roach 1741 you see that there looks to me like somebody has been touching up the lettering there with a pot of paint but it's um the ninth day of february 1741 uh, but the Roaches stayed uh, uh, in power, they stayed with some kind of high status. Um, so if that's 1741, she's old. But the earliest headstone then that we found is this one. And it's a butte. It's bigger than I'd expect for the date that's on it. Which kind of makes me think we need to triple check the date that's on it. Um, round headed, sloping shoulders. It's got an IHS on top. And it's got the three rings, uh, the three nails of the crucifixion below that. And then it's got glory in Excelsis Deo, which is very early. Uh, or it's, it's, you know, if this, and what's, it's carved in relief. There's a here, the lettering being in relief is an early sign. And the actual shape to the letters is early too, which makes me think it probably, as is indicated by down here, 7107. When we recorded this two years ago, we thought it was 701. But now I'm looking at it, I'm wondering, is it 704? How will she? One seven zero. See there with your own eyes. Do you see the base of a four there? So if that's seventeen not four, 
the lettering supports that. But this whole design element, that means, I mean, that's an early usage of that. So that's very interesting. 1704 uh, with uh, an associated footstone. That's potentially, is it an original footstone? Could be. Uh, that headstone there opposite us has a footstone opposite. See that? That's a pair. Uh, when we didn't use curbs in uh, Irish graveyards, uh, if you had the resources, you said, okay, there's the head of our grave and there's the foot of our grave. Here in Shin, we had the same thing there, headstone, footstone. You see the carved grave plot below that where you don't need your footstone. Um, but you can see that nice survival here. And we have some other early headstones in here. We have 1780s and the 1790s over there. And then maybe one of the most unusual stones that uh, we got in the surveys with Belihara uh, is this one. Now, it looks plain enough. This stone was erected by Nicholas Cook in memory of his daughter, Mary Kerr, alias Cook. Now, um, it's kind of your standard family, uh, but the, the ornament on the headstone is good. There's a kind of a fern type design there, some kind of foliage, but there's actually copper lettering inlaid into the I, H and S. So how it's affixed, I don't know. What date is on it? 1784. Let's, and the fact that it has an ornamented uh, border here and there makes me think, yeah, it's 1780s. Uh, it's carved in, uh, in, in, in false relief there. That's, that's an early sign too. But then this copper, can you see the copper? What happens with copper on a headstone when water flows through the copper, then it actually cleans the stone below. So that's why there's no lichen on this bit of the stone here. Nobody cleaned this. It's just the rain flow going through the copper. And I just can't think of, for all the graveyards we've done in the country, I can't think of another copper inlay on the stone. So, you know, it's kind of the things that would um, interest you or excite you in a graveyard um, are many and varied. And that's, that's another one there anyway. Cook family plot here. So uh, there's a Nicholas Cook here, Ellen Cook, alias English, that's her surname, um, Bulgadon. Oh yeah, one thing I was thinking about Bulgadon. My mum is, is, isn't, she's not from far, she's a couple of miles over that direction. And when local people say Bulgadon, it's spelled B-U-L-G-A-D-E-N, but they say Bulgadon. The D comes before the G. And the only other case I, I kind of aware of that is the pronunciation of Lanergan, L-O-N-E-R-G-A-N. In some parts of the county or uh, Tipperary and Limerick, it's Landrigan. So that D and the G in Landrigan and Lanergan gets uh, caught up here in Bulgadon as well. So it's some, there's a clue there to some kind of development in the language. Well, I'm saying that now, look at this lovely early wee headstone. It's got scrolled foliage there on top potentially scrolling acanthus leaves, which are associated with the dead, the IHS with the cross attached, and John Roach. Oh, so Roaches, 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 1759. So I was talking yesterday about Roach country being down for my territory, probably Shishin, somewhere down there, if I, over that direction, 20 miles. Yeah, you'd have to go through the hills over there, over by Ard Patrick, and get down into Kildare, and then you're into Roach. But here we are as an outlier. And then we're looking at this massive, what height is that? That's about three and a half metres, um, by, by, it's about four metres square. And it's got those obelisks and an urn in the middle. So it's a very classical kind of a, a grave monument. And who's it for? It's walled and curved and gated. And it's for the Roach family, the Roaches of Rathcannon. Lawrence Roach Senior Esquire, 1837 in the 99 year of his age. There was a study done of the size of uh, mortuary monuments in the Glasgow city cemetery. And uh, generally for men anyway, the, 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 old, the longer they lived, the taller their uh, mortuary monument was. So we're seeing something in that tradition here. But there's a few different uh, slabs built into that there. So I'd say we have a stratigraphy there if we were to parse that. But the roaches of Ratcannon, one of them there actually out of interest is um, one of them was married to um, a Catherine 
his wife was Catherine Roach, alias Sarsfield. So the only Sarsfields I know relating to Patrick Sarsfield are... Do you know what? Did we get Sarsfields over in Atlaka? Where's that? About five or six miles over that direction. And then there's the Sarsfields, Patrick Sarsfields of, of is it uh, Lucan in Kildare, or sorry, in County Dublin. Um, so there's linkages there, a Catholic family, very Catholic with the IHS and the Sunburst, uh, the Chalice, the, the Host, and then the board, the IHS, I presume, representing Christ, all here in this. So um, there's a lot going on there with that. And as I scan back around then, these are those rich pasture lands of County Limerick. I remember when we were surveying, there was a whole field of cattle behind us. And then as we look to the south, we're th there's the there's the Ballyhara Hills, um, all trimming all uh, around the edge over there. And some element of a reconstructed church there. Maybe original elements of the cross on top from an adjacent church, perhaps. Yeah, there's stuff going on here. So look, even in these small, like we, we recorded this in a day. Um, so not hard to read, uh, you know, if you're looking for your, tracing your family tree, then, uh, the, you know, it's easy to come in here and uh, spot if your surnames are here. Um, but the small ones are just as interesting as the big ones here. For any of the Peter Robinson people are out there thinking of who were my crowd and who was around in the 1780s, 1790s, the 1800s. Uh, the first of the Peter Robinson families to leave that assisted immigration was 1825. So what families would they have known? And the clues are here. This headstone is a Casey headstone, 1780s. So, you know, any of the families who went out with Peter Robinson, if they were from this neck of the woods, then potentially they would have gone. Uh, they might have known those Casey's or known of them. And just noticing now, Martha had point pointed this out earlier. Here's one of the corner styles. So when families come, from different townlands to come to the graveyards, they, they used to come across the fields. And they still do in the next graveyard we're going to, um, over in St. Malou's Holy Well. This is surprisingly nicely dressed there on top. So there's even an element of uh, coffin rest on that one. See how flat it is. And they're also surprisingly easy to walk up. Oh yeah, and there's more on the other side, and the steps down, so she broke them. But still, they work. And there's that lovely Limerick land. If you've seen any of our videos relating to Kilflane and the Palatines and so on, then that's over in those hills over there. Okay, um, I'll stop there. So a key feature here are the roaches. And for the headstone nerds amongst us, the, the copper inlay in a 1780s headstone over there. Very unusual. For the archaeologists, what's going on with those churches over there? With that structure, hmm, which is the original. We need somebody who's good at their buildings to come in and interpret that. Um, so this project was funded as part of a European fund, organised by Ballyhower Development and organised through Cork County Council and this one is Limerick County Council uh, with the help of the heritage offices as well and all the work was done by uh, community volunteers people who came out in the middle of the lockdown and got the fresh air and learned how to read a headstone and try and learn the sequence of events and the burial patterns in the graveyard okay I'll leave it there talk again soon Slán.